This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can delete the background from a glass image so that you can place it on top of another image like this and have the image show through the glass and in a distorted way so that it looks realistic. I should warn you before we get started though that this technique will only work with images that have a white background like you see here. So make sure you choose a stock photo that has a white background like this. If you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing in this tutorial, I will have a link to these images in the description of the video. Before we get started though, if you'd like to learn everything that there is to know about GIMP, be sure to check out my GIMP series. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in GIMP and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in GIMP, as you can see, I have my glass image open. The first thing I want to do is just right click on the layer over here and make sure we have an alpha channel added. I'm going to right click this and go to add alpha channel. If it's grayed out, that means you already have an alpha channel added and you're good to go. So what we're going to do first is we're going to use the pen tool to delete the background, the white background from the jar here. So let me grab the pen tool. I'm going to press B on the keyboard and I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a few times. And I'm just going to press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse to move the page around like this. And I'm going to click to create some points going around the glass jar like this. And I'm just going to do this really quickly just to get this done for this video so it doesn't take too much time. If you want, you could be a little more careful and precise. Okay, so once you've finished creating an outline around your image here, you could just go ahead and close the path by holding control and clicking that original point right there, and that's going to close the path. Now let me zoom out a little bit. I want to create a selection from this now. I'm going to press enter on the keyboard to create a selection, and I'm going to invert that selection because I don't want the glass jar selected. I want the background selected so I can delete it. So I'll go to select, and I will look for invert. And now what I'm going to do is just press delete on the keyboard and it's going to delete the background like that. If you're a Mac user, I think you don't have a delete key. So just go to edit and look for clear. Okay. Now, once we've done that, let's remove the selection. Let's go to select none, grab the move tool to get rid of the points there. Now I use the pen tool to delete the background from this because I like the crisp, clean lines you get around the object here. You could have done this with something else like the uh, fuzzy select tool or the select by color tool, but you don't get those clean edges like you get here. So I like taking the time to use the pen tool to get a clean crop like this. Okay. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and copy this. We'll go to edit copy. And now I'm going to open up the background image that I'd like to place this on. I'm going to go to edit paste as, new layer. And it's going to paste it on there like that. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit, make this a little smaller. So I'm going to grab the unified transform tool, which you can get by holding shift and pressing T on the keyboard. It's also this icon over here. I always get these icons confused. So I like to use the keyboard shortcut. So shift T to get that tool. I'm going to grab this large box out here outside on the corner. And I'm going to click and drag this in to scale it. And then I'm going to hold control on the keyboard so that it scales from the center like that. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. That looks pretty good. I'll press enter on the keyboard to finalize that. And now what I want to do is I want to make this layer the same size as the background layer. So to do that, I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to look for layer to image size. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode of this to multiply. So let's come over here to where it says mode and I'm going to look for multiply. And as you can see, the background's already showing through the glass, but we've lost some definition out of the glass there. It doesn't really look like glass anymore. So let's go ahead and correct that. So to do that, I'm going to create a duplicate of this layer. I'm going to look for this little icon down here that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this back to normal. And what I want to do now is copy this. I'm going to go to edit, copy, and I'm going to apply a layer mask to this. So I'm going to right click this and I'm going to add I'm going to click on add layer mask and I'm going to, I'm going to leave the defaults as they are white, full opacity, click add. And I'm going to paste this copy into the layer mask. I'm going to just press on the keyboard, control V and it's going to paste it in there. It's going to paste it as a floating layer. I want to anchor that down to the layer mask. So I'm going to click this little green anchor icon down here and it's going to paste that into the layer mask. And what I'm going to do now is open the color curve. So I'll go to colors, and I'll click on curves and I want to take this point down here in the bottom left and just slide this to the right. And if you notice, as I slide that to the right, the glass is becoming transparent on the page there. Okay. So uh, I'm going to put this right about here. You might just want to eyeball how to do this. If you put it too much, it's going to look, it's going to lose its effect. But if you do too little, you assume too much of that white background is going to be showing through there. So I'm going to find a happy medium right about there. That looks pretty good. And if you want, you could toggle the preview off and on to see the difference there. 
maybe a little less. We can always go back and change this later on if we need to. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now what I want to do is I want to make the background within this glass a little distorted, as you see here, so it looks a little more realistic. So to do that, let's click on the background layer and duplicate that by clicking the little icon down here that says create a duplicate, create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And now I want to create a displacement map. So we'll come up here to where it says filters, and I'm going to look for a map, and I'm going to click on displace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we have these two inputs right here, aux input one and aux input two. I'm going to double, I'm going to click on this question mark right here. And let me look for this image that we're working on. And I want to grab this original glass copy, the, the first one that we posted with the multiply blend mode. And I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. I want to double click on that as well. And now what I want to do is I want to take this slider right here where it says horizontal and vertical displacement and then just slide this to the right. And if you notice, if you look at the image, the background is dis distorting within the glass like that. Now the amount at which you should distort it, I'll leave that to your discretion. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna bring it up maybe, maybe about that much. That looks pretty good right there. I'll click okay. And now I wanna delete the background out of that image so that it's so that it's gone from this image here. So let me click on the jar layer, the, the original layer right here. Let me right click that and go to alpha to selection. It's gonna create a selection going around the glass jar. I'm gonna click on the background layer over here right below it and I wanna invert that selection. So I'll go to select, invert, and then I'll press delete on the keyboard. And if you notice, I made a little bit of a mistake here. It deleted my background to white because I don't have an alpha channel added. So let me go ahead and undo that. I'm gonna to go to edit, undo the clear. And let me just right click on this layer and make sure I have add alpha channel selected. I'm gonna click on add alpha channel. You wanna make sure you have an alpha channel there. And then let's try it again. Press delete on the keyboard and there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to select, none, and nothing visibly changed on the screen here. But if you look at the preview here, the thumbnail preview, you'll notice it consists of only the background in the shape of the jar. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I wanna blur the background of the image here a little bit to make it look a little more realistic so that the jar is in focus and the background is out of focus. So to do that, let me click on the original background layer right here. Let me duplicate that the same way we duplicated the other layers. And let's go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just gonna blur this a little bit, maybe about that much. That's looking pretty good. I'll go ahead and click okay. And I only want the background over here blurred. I don't want the, the little table that it's sitting on. I don't want that blurred. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply another layer mask and I'm gonna use a gradient so that the table is in focus, but it, gr it gradually transitions to being out of focus. So to do that, I'm gonna right click on that layer and go to add layer mask, leave the default, click add. And over here for your foreground and your background, you wanna make sure you have the defaults, which is black for the foreground, white for the background. If you don't have that, you can just click on this little icon down here to set that as it is. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to look for the gradient tool, which is right here, or you could press G on the keyboard. And for the gradient, make sure you choose a gradient that has black going to white like this in a transition. You don't want it going from hard black to hard white like that. You want an actual gradient there. So I'm gonna choose that, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my cursor right about here to where the jar is sitting on the table. And I'm just gonna click and drag up like this. And I'm gonna hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis. And if you notice, the bottom half of the image is in focus, but the top half, wherever I bring this top part of the gradient is out of focus. So I'm gonna bring this right about here to where the background, right where the grass begins, right about there. Leave that as it is, press enter to apply it. And there you go. Now, if at this point, if you, if, if you wanna adjust the visibility of the glass jar here, you can click on the layer mask right here. Click on that thumbnail and go to colors, curves, and from there you can make this a little more transparent if you want. You could remove some of that white from the, uh, the background there. Uh, let me just toggle the preview to see how it looks previously. Yeah, that looks good. I like it better like this. I'll go ahead and click OK. And there you go, that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about deleting the background from a glass image and applying it to a new background as you see here. So if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.